A rude customer comes into my business and demands to speak to the manager, but I'm the owner. He doesn't believe that a woman could own a business like this, since my business is in a male-dominated industry. So he continues to demand to see a male manager, one that he had met before, and that's when things take a turn. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. This happened about a year ago, right after I had opened two niche hobby shops. It's an incredibly male-dominated hobby. My typical clients are retired white dudes driving nice Audis and BMWs. I am a small 30-year-old chick covered literally head to toe in tattoos, but not on my face though. A new customer to me walks in. Apparently, he had been in before while I was out of the shop and one of my male managers helped him. He walks into my shop and when I smile and greet him with a, hi, how are you? He kind of just grunts at me. Okay, whatever. Sometimes people just want to be left alone to browse. I stay on my computer finishing up some ordering and let him wander a bit. He is taking his time but is clearly a bit agitated. So I ask if he is looking for anything in particular or if he is just browsing. He just looks at me. A pregnant pause where I begin to wonder if I should speak up. Like I said, old one percenters are my bread and butter. When he finally breaks the silence, it's not with a polite response but with a gruff. Where's your manager? I have been in retail for 15 years. Cheers. I'm used to the people who just don't remember their manners. But this question doesn't make me think, oh, he's looking for my boss. It makes me think, oh, he's looking for one of my employees. So I start to ask a couple qualifying questions. I'm the only one here today. What can I help you with? No, I want to speak to the man that is in charge. I'll wait. He says in a very condescending way, sir, I am in charge. What can I help you with? No, there is a man who helped me here last week and he and I were discussing a project and I'd like to speak with him directly so I can tell him what I want ordered. This is where I started to get a little snippy. Yay for working for yourself. I was frustrated that he was speaking to me in such a tone that he couldn't seem to understand that I am in charge. Well, sir, I am in charge here. I do the ordering, so what did you need me to order? He lets you do the ordering? Sir, I can see we aren't going to get anywhere. If you would like to come back later, you are more than welcome. But considering you won't speak to me and would rather speak to a male employee, maybe it would be best for you to come back at another time. Obviously, this enrages the entitled jerk and he gets so red that I was sure he would pop at any second. He starts sputtering and he takes a couple steps towards me. I have a particular character flaw where I forget that I am 5 feet tall, so I stand my ground. My mother calls it a lack of self-preservation. He demands my boss's phone number. Now I realize maybe I wasn't clear enough. I am the... I get cut off. Now, being ignored and interrupted are two of my biggest pet peeves and this man has a accomplished both in a relatively short amount of time. So I hand him a business card and walk off. He immediately calls a number and my cell phone starts ringing. So I answer, thank you for calling. You've reached the store owner at my store. I say all of this while staring at him right in the face. I'm petty as hell. And even this made me wonder if I had gone too far. He stormed out and I never saw him again. Still cracks me up when I remember his red veiny face staring at me with wide eyes. So am I the jerk? Did I go too far? This has got to be so frustrating to be in a situation like this where people just assume that you couldn't possibly be the person in charge no matter what you try to tell them. Sometimes even when you speak clearly and you tell people a certain thing, the actual words themselves aren't getting through so you have to say the same exact thing but just in other words so in this case the thing that might have cut through was just saying i'm the owner i literally own this place that's what i mean when i say i'm in charge i own this store rather than i do the ordering or what other employee do you want to talk to it's always more obvious in retrospect and maybe that wouldn't even solve this but that would have been the best shot of clearing this up in the moment short-term solutions aside it does suck that this type of stereotyping even happens in the first place i think some people just perceive what certain people would be into and and that is their worldview. They won't look at it in any other way. So if this was you and this was your business and one of your customers acted like this with you, what would you do? Let me know down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. Before we jump into the next story, don't forget to subscribe to the second channel where you can hear some personal stories of mine and you could submit your own stories too. Link in the description. Am I the jerk for not attending my friend's wedding on the day of my family's death anniversary? I'm a 35 year old female and seven years ago, I lost my husband, daughter, and mother to a car accident. They were hit by 
a drunk driver that drove through a red light and killed all of them on impact. Their deaths greatly affected me, and if it weren't for my friends and years of therapy, I would be in a much lower place. I am thankful for their support and have been able to process my grief properly. Two years ago, I took a job offer that provided more benefits than my current one and moved far away from my city to another. I travel back to occasionally meet up with friends and of course to visit my family's graves on their death anniversary. It's a seven hour car drive or around an hour by plane. Due to COVID last year, I drove to avoid contact with people and stayed in my old house. This year, I plan to do the same thing but ran into an issue with my friend having her wedding in my old city. My 33 year old friend Amy announced that she was engaged last year to her boyfriend of three months. My friend group and I were quite shocked as we had never met him nor did we know she was dating anyone as we usually tell each other. But nonetheless, we congratulated her and we were happy for her. They were supposed to have their wedding last year but couldn't due to COVID and postponed it to this year. We are not in the US by the way. And COVID cases are now less than 10 here in my country. We are allowed gatherings of less than 15 people and that is what Amy decided to do for her wedding. About a week ago, Amy called me privately to tell me her plans for her wedding. She told me that she is having it on the same day of my family's death anniversary and would like me to not visit their graves and just attend the wedding instead. I was quite shocked that the wedding was planned that specific day and questioned as to why she picked that day. Amy told me she just liked the number date and told me that I can't just gatekeep a certain day. Then I asked her why can't I go visit my family's grave. She told me she doesn't want my sadness and grief to take attention to her wedding. I was incredibly stunned at what she said. I know I am quite emotional, but I know how to compose and behave myself at certain events. Here's where I think I am the jerk. I told Amy that unfortunately, I will not miss out on visiting my family's graves. I tried to ask for a compromise and told her if my emotions were that much of a problem, I'll attend their graves after the wedding was over. She said she wants my support for the entire day and dedicate it towards her, but she'll think about my offer. It's been a week and I have not heard from her. I feel like I should just go to the wedding to keep the peace as I owe it to her, especially after all the support and love she gave after my family's death, but it still doesn't feel right to just attend the wedding and forget about my family. Would I be the jerk if I told her I won't be attending the wedding at all if she hasn't reached a decision. But before you decide, there's an update from the future. I did what some of you suggested and called my other friends to let them know what Amy had asked of me. They were quite livid and angry for me as they had no idea what Amy was planning for the wedding. We arranged a Zoom call with her the next day to discuss why she is being so insensitive to me. Well, the call was quite the battle. It started off calm and then Amy just blew up. You guys were right when you said that Amy was jealous of the attention that I had received during the time of my family's death anniversary. Her wedding was a way to shift the attention towards her. She tried to explain to us, by having the wedding on that day, it will turn a negative situation into a positive one. When she realized she wasn't convincing enough, it felt as though a mask had fallen from her face as she started yelling and insulting me. She said that she is tired of having to play the supportive friend role and that it's been seven years. I should just get over it by now or go join my family in the ground. My friend lost their anger and called her every name in the book. I'm honestly shocked and disappointed at the person who used to be my friend. It breaks my heart knowing I lost another person in my life, but I guess you guys are right in the sense that she never really was a friend. I now look back at our friendship and realize that it was often one-sided on my part. I wish it didn't take me so long to realize it. No one in our friend group of six people are going to her wedding now. We have decided to go no contact with Amy and block her on all social media. My friends have offered to go visit my family's graves together with me. I accepted and we are now planning to also make a scrapbook with my family's pictures. For once, I am actually looking for forward to this day and we'll start to plan more eventful activities like this. Thank you once again to everyone for helping me through this and please remember do not drink and drive. I am begging you, please don't. Drive safely everyone. So in the end, am I the jerk for not attending my friend's wedding on the day of my family's death anniversary? I think I, along with many people in the responses, were on the same wavelength when it comes to what they assumed the story was going to be when they first read the title. I really thought it was just going to be a coincidence or an accident or something, but the friend actually specifically chose that date because she was trying to turn a negative into a positive, and as a side bonus, she also likes that number of day. That's a really strange thing to do without talking to that person first, the person whose negative it is. It's the OP's negative day here. One of the top responses also interpreted it as that same 
same thing initially. I read the title and thought it would be a nuanced tale. Perhaps the friend was unaware or forgot what the date meant after so many years. Perhaps it was the only date available after having to reschedule due to COVID. And the OP could have visited the graves and gone to the wedding, but in their grief couldn't handle witnessing any happy occasion on this date. Thus brings us to a sad tale of an OP that needed help moving past their understandably huge grief. But no, the friend is downright evil and stupid. Pick the date to purposely mess with the OP and didn't have the brain cells to realize ordering someone to not even visit their family graves wasn't going to fly. So even if she was trying to turn something that was a negative into a positive, and if she just really liked that date based on the number for some reason, why would you tell somebody they can't visit their family's graves on that day? Then the OP makes a suggestion, well, what about if I go visit them after the wedding? The OP is basically trying to compromise every way they can, and there's not even a clear response to that. If this really is like the OP says, all about attention, then that is a pretty sad way to get attention. But let me know how you see the situation down below, and jerk or not a jerk, and why. My wife told her friends that she settled for me, and I'm not sure what to do. We have a perfect marriage. We've been together for nine years, married for four. We rarely fight, and we're often intimate. We go out on date nights, send memes to each other, the works. Recently, we got news that her ex-boyfriend overdosed and passed away. Now, my wife has no connection to him, so we expressed our condolences to his family over text and nothing more. She often goes out with her friends, and I always let her. I have no problem with it because I used to trust her 100%. I had to work late, so I told my wife that if she wants, she can call her friends over to our place since I wouldn't be around. Well, the rains were heavy and our office was told to leave early because some light flooding was taking place on the roads. I reached home and I could tell her friends were there, so I quietly went to our room unnoticed. Everyone was speaking quite loudly though, so I could hear a lot, and the ex-boyfriend came up in the conversation. My wife said that four years into our relationship, she got a call from her ex-boyfriend, who lived in a trailer, offering to help her see the world. She said she had a bag packed and was ready to leave, but in the end decided not to and settled for the stability that I was giving her. I didn't know about any of this. She never told me and she says that she apparently settled for me. One of her friends asked if she ever regretted her choice and she said that she used to, but not recently. I guess that's it, right? I'm not unstable enough for her to be attracted to me. She has to settle for someone like me. That one word just keeps revolving in my head. I slipped out of the house and went to a cafe to gather my thoughts, but got a call from her asking me where I was, that I was due home half an hour ago. I went back and she greeted me with a hug and a kiss as always, but I wasn't really into it and she asked me why my mood was off. I mumbled something like stress from work and went to bed, skipping dinner and our usual alone time, except I couldn't sleep. I woke up a few hours later into the night and sat on the balcony thinking about how I'm not good enough for her, about how I'm sure she doesn't love me. I know she at least loves me a little, but even for that, I have no guarantee. It's the next day now. I didn't sleep much last night and my wife is still asleep. I didn't tell anyone anything about what she said because I just can't. What do I do here, guys? Should I even talk to her? Divorce? Is there any hope for us moving forward? Does she even want to move forward? I don't know. I'm sorry for how jumbled up this is. My head is not really in a good place right now. Jumping into the future, there is an update. I made a post the other day about my wife saying something jarring. Some people asked for an update, so here it is. Well, immediately after the revelation, first I drove to a nearby town and took two days just for me and my thoughts. I called in sick from work and I told my wife that I was visiting a cousin. I then read all the comments you guys had for me. I really wanted to reply to some, but the thread was locked. But I nevertheless read each one and it was a lot of mixed advice. Everyone was advising me to talk to her, but everyone had different views on what to say to her. Some said to just ask for a divorce. Some said ask her what she meant. Some defended her and told me that I misunderstood everything. I decided to go for the middle option. Yesterday, I finally confronted her about it. I walked in and she came up to me for our hug, but I didn't really give one back. She asked me what was wrong and I told her we had to talk. I sat her down. She could tell I was sad and worried and I asked her if she was happy with me. She said of course she was. I asked her if she loved me and if she had done so through the entire course of our relationship. She was confused and said of course she did, and asked me where this was coming from. I told her that I heard her with her friends a few days ago. I heard how she was willing to leave me after four years to be with her ex, and how she claimed to have settled for me. She teared up, and said she didn't mean it like that, to which I asked how she meant it. She said that by settled for, she didn't mean she thought she could do better and was dating down, but that she made up her mind to stay with me because I was the 
better person. I told her that four years into our relationship, there shouldn't have been a question in the first place and brought up the fact that she said she had a bag packed. She started crying and said that that was an exaggeration on her part, that she only considered it and that it was in a moment of weakness when we were having a fight and were briefly on break. Her ex called her because he heard about our fight through a friend and they spoke on the phone for about an hour in which she flirted with her, put me down and offered to show her the world. She said she had a choice between going with her ex or reconciling with me and she chose me because she loved me and always will. She said that four years ago she was a weaker person, that I made her stronger and better. I then brought up the fact that she said she regretted it but hadn't done so recently. I asked her what she meant by recently. She said that she regretted her choice for only a month after the offer was made because she had thoughts about what could have been but stopped when she realized she had the best moments of her life with me. I asked her if anything happened between her and anyone else through the course of our relationship to which she said that she never cheated on me and never will and I believe her. We were both crying at this stage and we just hugged and sat together. She apologized for what she said and for what she was like five years ago. I apologized for listening in on a private conversation without telling her and for doubting that she loved me. I'm really happy that it was nothing but a misunderstanding and I'm glad we were able to come out stronger. Some people mentioned that I should get a DNA test for the kids, but we don't have any kids, so that's not a problem. Also, she mentioned possibly having survivor's guilt, so we're going to look into that too. So what do you think we should do from here? I know most people think that this is a happy ending and everything is fine and the OP is happy with the outcome as well, but something about this doesn't feel right to me. It sounds like she's an expert in knowing what he would want her to say and she just said the perfect combination of words to disarm him, but not really answer anything. The real answer in plain English would be, I wasn't sure about you, I was into him, but I chose you. And maybe that's what some of you got out of her explanation, but that's not really what I got from it. Somebody else who sees it a little bit differently said, this is not a good update OP. You have effectively chosen to let your wife control the narrative without any supporting evidence and you've chosen to swallow your suspicions in order to keep up the facade of having a good marriage. Your wife's story is vague and extremely suspect. You have decided to not look deeply into this or question her much in the hopes of pretending the whole thing never happened, but it's just rug sweeping and I have to wonder how long before those bags of hers will get packed for someone else. There's not much point saying anything else because you don't seem like you'd take on board anything that hints your wife might have been less than honest with you instead of looking at things analytically. I'll just urge caution anyway because I fear things will not end well. And to counter that, maybe she is completely telling the truth as she sees it and the OP is completely satisfied with her answer in every way. But the question I have is, what if he never found this out? She just never ever would have told him? I mean, this is not a minor thing. This is pretty huge. Would you yourself be okay with knowing the person you were with for nine years was about to leave you and literally or metaphorically either one had their bags packed ready to go out the door and the way they rationalized their decision was because they settled for you. Something about that just doesn't sit right but maybe you see this completely differently. Let me know how you interpret the situation down below and jerk or not a jerk and why. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you guys next time.